There's a problem with invention that universities, corporations, engineers, and even scientists themselves are not talking about. In an age of instantaneous communication, there's a breakdown in useful rapid discourse. This is actually a really big deal. It impedes mass scaling of the types of products that most of us in the world want to see. We need to move as quickly as we can from research and experimentation to factory implementation. We need to move as quickly as Mark Zuckerberg and his small team when they released version 1.0 of Facebook as an experiment from a dorm room. His successful prototyping and customer trials have been a powerful model for some internet companies, but for the rest of the world who builds photovoltaics, flexible electronics, regenerative organs, quantum computers, superior batteries, and flying cars, in my case AI, enabled microscopes, it's, we've just not done anything like this. There are likely cognitive constraints, more than actual technological ones, that cause individuals and institutions to miss what is literally under their fingertips, where there are processors much faster than they can even think. So how is it that Edison in New Jersey nearly 130 years ago and Page and Brin just 15 years ago knew how to change the world in radically transformative ways nearly overnight while the rest of us fail out to? It's an illusion of proximity. Proximity to ideas fuels revolutions, but illusions that we are close cause stagnation. Talk alone is useless without experimentation when those conversations are at a distance from each other and the physical place where experiments can immediately result in building new products. A basement lab on an Ivy League campus with all the broadband and Slack channels available still leave ideas in that basement or on a cloud server somewhere in the desert. The solution to this problem is to experiment with and inside the factory itself. The factory can be as small as a 3D printer and a laptop, or as large as a Boeing factory that is the size of a city. There needs to be a change in mentality to one where the instinct that risk is mitigated by not disrupting production until something is revolutionary, to one where something revolutionary can only be invented by disrupting, disrupting production. Possibly the truest of human endeavors, whether we're trying to compose using improvisation or to collide subatomic particles in ways that no one ever had done before, both result in the best possible outcomes. These kind of explorations and discoveries are exciting, they're fulfilling and valuable for progress because the outcomes are different than what we expected. We bridge experience, planning, and procedure in order to fail by finding something new. This happens in labs, but by the nature of the false feeling of proximities gets lost and the counterintuitive search for success continues and is funded. This only produces the most mundane status quo. Instead, with bays of processing tools and computational intelligence that is beyond our imaginations of even 20 years ago, we can experiment in real time, not by building only those things that we plan to build, but instead those things that we never believed we could build. The future lab is the factory itself where we break things and we make things, including our own potential.